Hey, Resurrection Church, we are on week six of our Wisdom for Relationships series. And in our discipleship group gatherings each week, we're growing and having intentional conversations as we also use that to grow in love and transformation. And just to remind you, we began with looking in intentional conversations and looking at how to listen really well. And then last week, we looked at how to ask some really good questions to get to the heart. And we told you that the reason why we were doing that was so that we could move on to the final section of intentional conversations, which is speaking. We wanted to ask good questions that get to the heart so that we could learn how to speak to the heart. And, and we want to be able to bring truth when we're speaking into one another's hearts. We want to be able to speak the truth about God. And that's what we're going to focus on this week. Next week will be uh, the truth about the gospel. The following week will be speaking the truth about our identity in Christ. But speaking the truth of God uh, into someone's heart. Let me give you an example. Let's just say you're having a conversation with a friend and you're talking about something simple like your, I don't know, your new fantasy football team or something like that. And the conversation goes from really surfacey kind of stuff like that, all of a sudden it shifts when your friend gives you an entry gate, an opportunity to go deeper with them by sharing that they're feeling anxious about something. Maybe the thing they're anxious about is something that's going on in a relationship that they have. There's some brokenness there. Or maybe they're anxious about their financial situation or about something going on at their job. Now, when they bring this up, there's this opportunity for you to go deeper, but your temptation is going to be to focus on only what's happening on the surface, what's going on in the circumstance. You're gonna be tempted to say something like, well, maybe you need a new relationship, or maybe you need to save more money if it's a financial thing, or maybe you need a new job if it's a vocational thing. And why are you tempted to do that? Well, because all of us, when we face stressful, anxiety-ridden circumstances, want to just fix the problem. We just want to change the circumstance when we're going through something difficult. It's a normal response, and so we do that with one another. Because these are real issues that need to be addressed. When we have a circumstance that's broken and it's not working, we really do often need to address these issues. So it is important to do that, but there's always something bigger and more important going on in someone's heart in the middle of whatever circumstance they're facing. And really it all boils down to what we are believing or disbelieving about God. And so you ask some good questions to them to learn more, such as, it seems like your life feels out of control to you. Is that right? Does it, does it feel like God is out of control? Does it feel like God doesn't have control of your circumstance? And, and through some time of just asking some good questions, some clarifying questions, you discover that the root of their anxiety is actually that they're not trusting in the goodness and sovereignty, the greatness of God. Then you get to speak the eternal truth about who God is into this temporary circumstance. You might even be prayerfully listening and and prayerfully asking God to reveal some scripture to you that you could share with them or some characteristic of God that you might be able to encourage them with. There's a story that my friend told me. He was actually walking with a friend of his in relationship and they're having a conversation and his friend was sharing with him that he was anxious about something going on in his life. And, and as they were able to go deeper, they, they did understand that what was happening with his friend was that he didn't trust that God was in control. He wanted to be in control of his circumstance. And so my friend got to share with him the story of Jesus uh, calming the wind and the waves in the middle of the storm when he's with the disciples on the boat in the Sea of Galilee. And there's this line in that story that says, even the wind and the waves obey him. 
And, and my friend was able to share with his friend that truth and just speak that truth into, into his friend's heart. And that ministered to him and he started weeping and he just began to realize God is in control. It's not just me floating out here on my own in the middle of this circumstance. It's not just about me controlling it, but it's about me trusting him in the middle of it. So that was, a, that was a great example of a way in which someone could speak the truth about God into someone's heart. So let's observe the gals group that we've seen the past couple of weeks. Let's observe them speaking the truth about God into one another's life. We're picking up in the middle of a conversation where uh, we'll first see Natalie speaking truth into Tammy's life. Tammy had shared a real desire for other people in her life to love her and to affirm her and to give her kind of accolades and, and affirmation. And uh, as Natalie reflected on the truth about God, she had a really wonderful thing to share with her and it involves a story about Jesus. So that'll be a great thing for you to see. And then uh, Liz actually gets to hear the truth about God be spoken into her heart by Tammy. And, and here's a little bit of the context for that part of the story. Liz has, in the course of her life, really experienced a lot of suffering at the hands of other people, people who have harmed her, who have sinned against her greatly. And another part of, of Liz's story is that she's a small business owner. She owns a doggy daycare and she cares for people's dogs all day long. And so Tammy kind of observes something of how God's character uh, connects with Liz's vocation and, and really speaks some healing words into Liz's life about the truth of God. Check this out. So, um, <laughs> uh, sorry, it is kind of awkward like starting off like that. <laughs> Um, so mine was uh, based on like the woman in the well. Actually, when I was thinking about the woman at the well, I was thinking about you and uh, what you shared uh, before about like, um, I guess desiring like that, I don't even know, what, like that being filled with like maybe the praises of others rather than like um, getting it from God or whatever. And like uh, the part that hit me was when, when you were talking, I kept seeing a picture of like a hole, like a deep hole. And um, like you trying to fill it with like stuff, like let me throw my TV in there, maybe Netflix, maybe like um, my kids in there, you know, like to fill that area and whatnot. And um, 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 I was also kind of like feeling like a little bit of like despair, like because it never fills that hole and like, um, and whatnot. And then um, I was just thinking about the woman at the well and how she like goes there and um, she's like feeling like scarcity or like she wants to be away from the ridicule of others or whatever. And um, like just a place of solitude in the burning hot sun because she's going in a place or going at a time that nobody goes because it's hot, you know. And um, Jesus meets her and he, she's like, my well's too deep. Like well, you have nothing to draw with. Like. And like the symbolism under that, like a her hurt or whatever it is, is too deep, like you can't. And he's like, well, I could give you living water that would well up into like, like you'd never have to go and fill that place ever again. And um, I was just like thinking about that and just thinking about the fact that she like, maybe she was trying to conserve, like even conserve her water so she didn't have to go to the well because she's, she's in this lack, like, oh, I'm gonna, um, and then just knowing that God can fill you so much that like you're so overflowing that you go to other people and want to tell them about like him and whatnot. And like, yeah, just like that encouragement, like that he can fill that area and like it will keep welling. Like, you know, like you can never outgive God, I guess. So like you don't have to have that fear of, or um, feeling to conserve yourself because God will give you what you need and more, you know. So that's what I was thinking. Thank you. That's mm -hmm. beautiful. Mm -hmm. I think um, that resonates because um, 
part of me feels so, that I want so much to give to the people around me that I think I forget how much I need to receive from him. That I can't just go give, give. I need to admit that need, admit that longing, and see. Mm. Yeah, thank you. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. It's super encouraging. Thank you. Um, I was thinking about you, Elizabeth. Um, I just, when you shared before about the abuse that you went through, and I just can't even imagine what that was like for you and just how much trust was broken, um, how much being mistreated was a violation of who God created you to be and how he intended you to be treated. Um, I started thinking about that he's your shepherd, your good shepherd, and you love animals and you care for dogs and you take that seriously and you want to treat people's animals with like love and respect and um, shepherd them in a way, that's what you do. And I just was thinking like how beautiful that he will never be harsh with you. He will never be anything but gentle with you. He will never treat you with anything other than dignity and honor because that's what he created you to receive. And you may not always get that treatment from other people, but that's his intention towards you to be gentle and um, caring and protective. All the things that a spouse was meant to do and failed to do. And your God is your husband and your protector. And I just thought of your your interaction with animals and it just gave me a beautiful picture that you're being shepherded by the Good Shepherd. Like he cares for you. He doesn't take you out and walk you, but <laughs> like you do <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> it's it's a good it's a good picture because in the same way that I, I provide for the needs of the animals that I take care of, he's done the same for me. You know, in those moments when, when I walked away and didn't have a single penny to my name, you know, he was there. He was the one who provided for me, and he was the one who filled the hurt places. And thank you. Yeah. It says he mends the brokenhearted, you know. And yeah. so he's it's so true. He's in the process of mending. Mm -hmm. So we've gotten to watch the ladies speak into one another's lives and now you get to do the same thing in your groups. Remember, we're gonna split up uh, in smaller gender-based groups, three, four people or so. And uh, first though, we're actually gonna get some time alone, some time in solitude. And each of you are gonna get individual time uh, for just maybe a few minutes, 10 minutes or so prayerfully considering some of the aspects of who God is. What's his character? Who, what is he like? And you can use time of prayer, time of reflection on things that you know about his character already, maybe searching the scriptures and, and finding some things. And then you're gonna come back together as a group. You're gonna share what you were reflecting on. And then you're gonna answer a question that will allow each of you to understand where everyone's at. That question is, which truth about God are you most struggling to believe right now and why? So go and grow in love and transformation as you have some intentional conversations.